Sarah Bennett, I have to tell you, you caused me hours and hours of work over the last three years. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Your book, that, that The Case Against Homework, was the first book that I read about homework. Now, hey, I was new, you know, neutral on the thing. I didn't know anything. I read your book, and I got incensed. Mm -hmm. And then I sorry. read a few. I'm sorry. And then we then we talked, and that started the homework odyssey for me. Mm -hmm. So you're very influential, and maybe you are the diva of the stop homework movement in this country, because you've been very active for the last three years on it. I have been. So what, do you have a blog that lists Stop Homework? I do. It's stophomework.com. I'm still on to, year, on to year three, really active. Lots of parents who are commenting on it and, like you, getting incensed. Lots of teachers, actually, I think, who read it and change some of their thinking about what they're doing in school. So I feel happy about that. Well, I went into my school site council three years ago because mm -hmm. in San Francisco, the school district sets a homework policy, but the local schools have a measure of control on it. And I went into them and I said, if 40 years of research show that there is no value to homework whatsoever, K to five, why are we giving it to our kids? And what did they say? Ugh. Okay, you know, I, I've never had a colder reception in my entire life. They, they didn't. They didn't want to buy into it at all, and there was all sorts of reasons, and I had grief about it, and so my kid did homework in kindergarten, in the first grade, and the second grade. Last year, I went down to the school district, and with one of the head honchos over there, we worked out a settlement, an idea of how parents could get their view to manage homework the way they wanted to. Because there's some parents in our school district who feel that the more homework you give a child, the better it is for the kid. Mm -hmm. So they like, you know, it's within their culture. And, and so mm -hmm. you can't really take that away from them when you're trying to get your own rights. Because that's not really totally fair. And also you get a whole bunch of people against you. So we came up with a package system. And at, the homework is a tool of the parent. How that parent manages their home. Because there's a division. You have school and you have home. There's boundaries there. So the packet system works or should work as follows. The parent can request a supplemental packet. And that's the regular homework thing. And they give that to the kid. The, the teacher can send home an involvement packet. Like measure the picture frames because we're going to use this in class later on. <laughs> Or the teacher can send home a tutoring packet. So the parent knows that the kid has a problem. You can't have a parent with a 13-year-old, oh, I didn't know my kid didn't read, right? All right? You got a tutoring packet. The kid mm -hmm. got a problem. You got to take care of something. Or you do nothing. Okay? So I went to school this year. The school starts, and my daughter's off on independent learning. They went off for the first 10 days. And the school district still got money for her being mm -hmm. there because independent learning. I get home a letter from the school, and the teacher says, you will have 45 minutes every day of homework. It's the third grade, right? An eight-year-old. Okay. <laughs> and you will, child will read, will have a contract, a reading contract, and you will read for a half an hour. The parent signs off on it. Right, that wasn't going to happen in my house. <laughs> There's no time left. When's the time for her to go out and play or whatever she wants to do? Right. Do no, it, 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 it's, it's definitely a problem, and some kids may need extra help from their parents. But call it that. Send home a tutoring packet and let the parent know that you have to do something. And if you're not able to or not willing to do it yourself, Go back to the teacher and say, look, we have this issue here. The child needs to learn to read. I don't know how to help them teach with them this. Right. I don't know how to do teach them the math. What can we do together? Not only that, I think what's missing is, is usually if a child is having trouble in school, the way the school is teaching it is not reaching that child. So, so, so to send home more of the same for that child is just an exercise in frustration. There are so many different ways of teaching math or 
reading or any of the basics, right? The school tends to teach it only in one particular way. So what about if the kid comes home and you want to do something different with them? And especially if you're a, you know, an educated parent yourself, you probably have different ways of teaching them that are probably going to be more effective. So to then do more of the teacher's work at home is really a waste of time. Right. You have to take a different approach. Right. Exactly. Any bright yeah. spots around the country on, on homework? Is, is the tide going to turn? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I follow what happens in different communities. I do know that the parents in Palm, I can't remember if it's Palm Springs or Palm Beach, Florida, are up in arms because they've just... Um, Palm Springs is in California. So, 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 I guess I guess it's Palm Beach, Florida, then, where they've really organized themselves because the school board implemented new homework policy this year, where I forget exactly what it is, but it's up to about an hour a night for the third graders. Wow. So they really oh. added a lot, and the parents have really gotten upset about that. It's still very slow, Stan. It feels to me like it's one person at a time, one community at a time, one teacher at a time. You know, when is um, the whole tide going to turn, I, I couldn't even begin to predict anymore. It's also hard for a parent to speak out. Yeah, it is. I don't know why, but I guess maybe they've been brought up in the public school system where they were told to follow, to follow the rules too much. Maybe you know? they think that they're gonna, the school is going to take it out on their kid if they open their mouths. Well, it could be that, too. I think there's a lot of reasons. I think, in general, most people are not that confident to speak up, and they think that the school may know better than they do. So they don't have quite the nerve that you or I do of going into the school and saying, hey, this is what my research shows me. What do you think about that? And then the teacher, <laughs> uh, well, we do it because, and they give you some reason, and you say, well, actually, um, can you point to some research on that? Because I haven't been able to find any. You know, the teacher says, oh, yeah, your third grader needs it because it will teach you responsibility. And you say, well, can you show me a study that shows that it will teach responsibility? Right. And the teacher says, I can't. And then you say, well, then you know what? I'd like to teach my child responsibility myself by having them make their bed every morning or, you know, go grocery shopping with me or whatever it is that I want them to do rather than to do your work. I mean, that's that's the thing. What are we saying? We have to prepare children for an unhappy adulthood? Right. No, children are children. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, Stan, nobody ever talks about this, but you don't say, well, my kid is going to learn how to drive when they're 16, so when they're 7, I'm going to put them behind the wheel to get them prepared for when they're driving, right? Right. Make There's them have an accident. <laughs> right. <laughs> At yeah, seven. What it's going to be like. I mean, uh -huh. but in terms of Certain life skills, we think we need to get them started early. Well, they're going to have a, a boring job, so they may as well do it now. A boss is going to tell them one day. And you know what? Most people don't have bosses the way school, you know, the way school acts, which is, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have this done by tomorrow. I don't care what else is going on in your life. I mean, the most boring kinds of jobs are still those jobs that people do by punching a time clock and they leave them at the end of the day. Right. Otherwise, if you have a little flexibility in your job, your job is not as boring and usually you're not as, uh, you know, you're not under the daily, hourly responsibility. You may have to get the report due in three weeks or you're on some kind of deadline, but you're, you're figuring out how to handle that. A parent who told me that they advised their child to get used to this because that's what it means. I said, you should, you have to teach your child. And he says, what do I have to teach him? I said, you have to teach him how to open up the newspaper, get a wanted and get a different job. Right. Good. I, that's, that's a very good response. I agree with you. Well, thank you very much for all the work, Sarah Bennett. You're a hero to me for oh. leading the charge on oh. Uh, ending homework and enlightening a lot of parents and hopefully making a lot of kids' lives a lot happier. Well, thanks so much, Dan. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.